Welcome back. Israeli Defense Forces are calling for an evacuation of Gaza City as they prepare for a ground invasion. Hamas, meanwhile, is reportedly telling Gaza residents to ignore the IDF safety instructions, getting in the way of them moving. Joining me right now is retired U.S. Army Colonel and Green Beret Dale Buckner. He is also the CEO of Global Guardian. Colonel, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Assess the situation this morning as you see it. Uh, Maria, it continues to deteriorate. I think that's quite obvious. We do anticipate that the IDF will go into Gaza, and when that happens, it will be a trigger that will be felt worldwide. Uh, we continue to execute evacuations safely by charter air to Europe, Cyprus, uh, and Turkey, and we continue to move our clients to Jordan successfully right now. But make no mistake, we are concerned that once the IDF goes into Gaza, we will lose the air capability and potentially the Jordanian border could be closed for three, five, seven days, something like that is what we're anticipating. Wow. And, and many people are talking about this ground assault potentially becoming the bloodiest of this war because this is ground fighting house to house where soldiers will go into homes uh, in the Gaza Strip and try to root out the terrorists and, and rescue hostages. Do you believe that Israel can win this? Can they overtake the current terrorists that are there in Gaza? I think that, number one, they will go in. Number two, without question, it will be bloody and violent, and there will be mass casualties on both sides. The closest thing I can tie it to is I was in Iraq. If you remember the United States in Fallujah, looking back, statistically, Fallujah was the bloodiest part of the entire campaign. This is the equivalent. It's hard. It's difficult. It's manpower intensive. Uh, ultimately, to answer your question, I do believe they will make massive strides in deteriorating the capability of Hamas uh, for a very long time. This will be an enormous setback when all the dust is settled. And this could go on for months, if not years, at some level. Ultimately, do I think they can destroy them completely? Uh, no. There's some level of ISIS still running around. But are they depleted to a level where they're dysfunctional or limited? That is true, and I think that's the outcome that Israel will accomplish. Well, Texas Congressman and Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall, was with me on this program yesterday. Take a listen. I want to get your reaction to what he said. Watch. The next phase of this is going to go house to house. That's going to be the most dangerous part, the most bloodiest part, uh, where they're going to rescue hostages, kill terrorists. It's not going to be a matter of days or even weeks, it's going to be a matter of months. At the same time, they have to worry about the threat from the northern front out of Lebanon. Remember, uh, Hezbollah has 100,000 rockets that can overload the Iron Dome. The idea the administration wants to sweep Iran under the rug is that they had nothing to do with this, while their fingerprints are all over this operation. Colonel, what about that? We've already seen efforts by Hezbollah to join this fight. Tell us what your expectations are uh, for regional actors trying to get, in, get involved uh, and, and uh, assist Hamas. So, number one, I agree with the majority of the clip you just showed. We're not evacuating clients to north to Lebanon because of Hezbollah and its presence and what's happening right now. We're not evacuating to the south in Egypt as even Egyptian resupply efforts uh, have been intercepted by the Israelis and vehicles destroyed with food, water, and things like that. Ultimately, Jordan to the east is the outlet. That is in a box. The way we view that is that's relatively contained. As I described before, once the IDF does enter, which we fully believe they will, I do think there'll be a global response. And I ultimately think you'll see protests around the world as people start to take sides. Uh, am I concerned that this becomes a regional fight? We are. We believe the potential of that is there. We also believe that the calculus going on politically with different leadership around the world and the region specifically of how and what Russia's role will be, what will China's role be, how will the North, Korean, North Koreans play a role in, in, in concert, if you will, where is the U.S. ultimately going to stand, Saudi Arabia, some of the Gulf states? I think all of those things are being discussed and framed right now. But ultimately, do we think there is a threat of this becoming a regional conflict? We do think that's real. Uh, what about this uh, quiet agreement that we are told? There are reports that the U.S. and Qatar have reached an agreement 
to block Iran from accessing that $6 billion in funds that was part of the prisoner swap, Colonel. Are you buying it? Uh, I think part of that's real, but the issue is it's fungible, and, and this can be moved around in different ways yeah. and can be replaced in different ways over time. So it's an issue. I don't think anyone truly knows the effect of it. We know conceptually what that could mean. Ultimately, it's just one factor of many in this conflict, and we're much more focused on what's happening right now in the country. And, and Colonel, you've been talking about moving hostages, getting people out. Have you been doing that? easily? Uh, so we're not moving hostages, Maria. We're moving corporates from biofinance, tech, and families. Uh, we have not done hostage rescue. We have done evacuations of civilians primarily. We have supported some defense contractors. Uh, the word easy doesn't apply. I've talked to you about the Ukraine in the middle of the Ukraine. I've talked to you about evacuations in the middle of Afghanistan. Uh, I feel like a broken record, unfortunately, but these scenarios have the same template. Right now, it is a luxury, and I use that word very specifically, a luxury that we can move our clients by air still. There are still some commercial options. We're still flying private charter. Yeah. We do anticipate losing that. It is difficult. It's never easy because we have to get people from point A to point B. It's difficult. Of course. Yeah. Well, thank you for those evacuations. Colonel, good to see you. We appreciate it. Dale Buckner joining us this morning.